Hey guys, welcome to How To In A Few. Today we're going to take a look at changing power packs on a Johnson outboard. This is a 250 Johnson. I think the year is either 1999 or 2000. Um, but they all should be pretty close to the same. There are some optical uh, um, engines that have a slightly different setup. But basically, power packs look like this. Uh, we've got kind of a, a weird hesitation problem that I haven't been able to track down. And given the, the age of the motor and the relatively cheap price, I think these were under $20 a piece, I decided I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to check the coils with a meter, but uh, I don't particularly like uh, checking, waiting around uh, for a part and uh, before installing. So we have all the parts we need and we're going to go ahead and do this anyway and keep uh, some of the ones uh, that we have as spares. Um, or possibly uh, somebody else will get them. We'll see. But here we have some brand new ones, and we're going to start this process by checking out the resistance uh, between the contacts on this coil, and uh, then we'll check the old ones and do a comparison to see if we have any uh, that are um, somehow reading differently to give us a clue as to whether uh, that might be a bad one that's not giving us the spark that we need to keep those cylinders firing and causing the hesitation uh, that we're seeing when we take off. All right, so we have our ohm meter set up. We'll go ahead and take a reading on the two. Well, I'm saying a 340, 341 range, just to make sure. All right, just to be safe, we'll only undo one call at a time. So we don't mix up any of the wires. But let's do a little test here. Okay, and we're getting about 257. I know I'm probably in the way. 256. So already, a substantial difference there. So we'll have to see what our outcome is when we're on the water. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hook this one up and start here at the bottom. All right, can't find a flathead. Bottom's gonna be the hardest to reach, so I kind of wanna start there. We wanna be careful not to drop these bolts in. These are all 10 millimeter or 3 eighths. Man, I like I like the way that feels. I prefer when my bolts come loose. And they kind of break loose, and then I don't have any problems getting them out. Are a bunch of washers on this screw, so I'll make sure you catch all those. Top one, much looser. All right, first one's out. Collect my screws. Also notice some corrosion around the ground contacts. That could be also responsible for giving us a different reading or possibly causing some of the problems we're feeling. I'm gonna go ahead and just check the resistance on.
260. Same as the top one. It worries me a little bit because I'd like them to match the new one. What I'll do real quick right now is actually pull out another new one and make sure that I have consistent readings on the new ones. Well, that's not good. The second new one reads like my original one, so the first one is already an anomaly. Um, not good. All right, so I wire brushed. those mounting surfaces as best I could. Now I'm going to open my third coil. Also 340. I think I'm going to go through all of these. I'm a little concerned. Five of the six are reading at 340 and one at 260. Another old one, 260.
274. All right, making sure all my contacts are back in place. One side of the engine is already done. On to the other side. Distinct possibility that I might speed up the video at this point. <laughs> We've got a much different reading off of that last one. Only around five. So I'm gonna make sure that that this contacting surface is clean. I really needed some sandpaper. So let me go try to locate some sandpaper. All right, after a little sanding. That looks a lot better. All right, so there we go, all new coils. Now, since I always keep an extra set of plugs, <laughs> you're probably gonna come in and say, you should have started it up before you put the plugs in to make sure that you solved your problem. But, I don't wanna reopen everything. And while I have this off and easy to get to, we're just gonna crank these puppies out swap them out a little black and oily but doesn't look too bad make sure we gap 0.3 it's already there now there are torque specifications for everything that I'm tightening and I'm gonna leave it up to you to look those up Back the camera up, put the hose up to it, we'll give it a little test start and see how it runs. Alright, got our water hooked up and I'm fixing to turn on the battery. I did notice that I had the battery turned on with the charger hooked up, so we might have dead battery. But if we don't, uh, I'm going to prime the bulb and give it a crank to see if uh, we get any improvement.
That's pretty good for a cold start. So, everything looks positive. Um, ran pretty smooth. Unfortunately, from past experience, I can tell you, you're never gonna know whether uh, repairs you made are 100% certain to uh, fix your problem until you put the boat in the water and actually try it out. So that'll be the next step at some point in the next day or two. Uh, we'll do that. And, uh, but there you go. That's how you change your power pack, um, ignition coil on an L-port. Johnson 250, the 150 is on up in between, even some of the 90s have similar coils, so uh, that should help you out. If it did, give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video, and thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.